Hello, game day. Welcome, everybody, to the podcast. We have got one of the rising stars of a rising star team in the Gold Coast Suns today. We've got Powley, Will Powell, and uh, I'm pumped up. So I'm going to kick it over to Ponch. But first of all, I just want to remind you guys, wherever you're watching, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell button. It really helps us so much. So Ponchy, give Powley the pump up that he absolutely deserves. Yeah, so he is a WA boy getting drafted out of uh, Claremont Tigers. He went pick 19 in the 2017 draft to the Gold Coast Suns, where he's had an absolutely breakout season this year in 2020. So, Pally, give us a hello game day. Hello game day. You! We Lovely. love that. Love it. <laughs> Beautiful, mate. Now, Pally, we've got a few stitch-ups for you. You would be absolutely not surprised to hear that, I'm sure. Yep, no, not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I just wanted to see what you've been up to since the end of the season. Uh, you've obviously... Been following the podcast for a while now. We follow you too, but been a bit quiet on the socials the last few weeks. So, where have you been? <laughs> yeah, it's it's been fun. Um, the boys we rented out a pub two weeks ago. That was good fun. Had a local singer come along, and we just spent the whole night there. That was probably the one main club event we had. <clears throat> and then it was just scattered around other people's houses. So we had a few pool parties um, and that sort of thing. It was pretty fun. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. So the Gold Coast boys keep a pretty tight knit little group down yeah, we there. Do. Yep. Yes. Yeah, beautiful, yeah, mate. And you're the Messiah of the group, apparently. Oh. <laughs> you call yourself anyway. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> Is there any uh, truth to that? <laughs> oh, if that's coming from someone I thought it would be coming from, it's the uh, juggernaut. <laughs> uh, we come through little Snapchats here and there just to piss take. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I might have flicked the Snapchat with the comment being on the Messiah, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> apparently the only uh, resemblance to a Messiah that is going on in that house is the fact that you always lose in COD and you're resurrecting all the time like the Messiah. <laughs> oh, that's a stitch. That's a lie. <laughs> uh, now, mate, uh, you're a fussy eater as well, from what we've heard. And yep. are there any particular foods that you don't like? Tomato. Tomato. Um, avocado. That's all. Oh, I don't know. If there's just something I haven't tried before and it's put in front of me, I'll sort of back off it a bit. Well, um, that sounds like my staple diet. But uh, <laughs> pumpkin. Apparently you hate pumpkin, but you love pumpkin soup. Where's the? Can I just sort of understand the logic there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's probably because I put a shitload of cream in the pumpkin soup so I can't taste the pumpkin. <laughs> Well, that'll help. Now, this one's my favourite, Fowley. Now, apparently, when your old man has had a few beers, he tends to send the boys a few pictures of the farm animals after a few beers. Uh-huh. They've got a few random messages with pictures of farm animals. What is the deal there? I do not know. He's always done it. I go through my phone at the moment. I've just got some weird shit that he sends me when he's, when he's blue. Um, all hours of the night. Oh, it's, he just wake up with the biggest laugh. Yeah, and he yeah, sent the boys around the club a few photos, has he? I don't know. I haven't heard about that, but <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Ponch, I'm sure, can back me up here. <laughs> uh, I can confirm one source said that it's, that it's happened, so yeah. we'll, we'll say it's a half truth. <laughs> it's a half truth, though. I'll, I'll say it's a full truth. <laughs> now, another funny one, mate, that we've heard is one time. <laughs> When you were living with the boys, I don't think I know what this one is. <laughs> you, were, you were locked out of the house with a friend. <laughs> yes. And what's happened is you couldn't get in the house, so you've made her climb through the dog door <laughs> that was built for a dash hound. <laughs> is there truth to that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That is the funniest thing ever. Um. So can you give us a rundown of what happened? How did you get locked out? <laughs> Or you just didn't have a key? Uh, I probably forgot the key in my room or something because I'm pretty ditzy. Um, <laughs> so, so what not better than get the little friend to come through and crawl through the doggy door? Well, luckily you had her there. Now, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if this is the way you sort of snagged her and met her because apparently the rumour has it <laughs> that you had your Tinder profile as your son's <laughs> photo. <laughs> <Is> that true? <laughs> Uh, this, I can't deny anything. That's shocking. <laughs> that is shocking. Yeah. Come on, mate. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, early day, early days. Yeah, it was there was a couple of sons picks in there. And then 
one of the boys somehow found out and got flipped in the group chat and they were deleted straight away. That's fair enough, mate. I would be shameless at that. If I if I could uh, use the AFL label to pull a bird, I'd do it. Yep. So don't feel too bad about it. Still wouldn't pull one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can just see the people unsubscribing when they see my face. <laughs> oh, now, now, now you've got one, rid of the mode, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Now, another one is um, with rejection. And this is a, a rejection of a high-profile magnitude. You've approached... Margot Robbie at Hellenica for a photo and she's absolutely said no go. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was the first dinner Pete and took took me out on. Um Hellenica. We went there and we walked in and there's just this big table and like no one around them. Anyway, we sit on the table the other side of it and we ate all that dinner and Pete took like, Oh, what are the odds of you going up to Margot and asking her for a photo? I'm like, oh shit, here we go. Um, so we get the odds, they end up losing. Um, but my pride walk up to Margo, say, Oh, Margo, hey, Joey, um, do you mind if I grab a photo? And she's just looked at me and gone, uh, I would love to get a photo with you, but I'm with my family, it's my sister's birthday, but I just want to keep it all family. And I've just turned away, head down, walk of shame, straight back to the table, <laughs> and it's just not a word spoken. You're a brave man because I played the odds game with the boys and there are embarrassing moments, but I will give you the victory that I've been told when she said no to you, she did politely touch your arm. So <laughs> take that as a small yeah. victory. Yeah, she touched my arm. So we'll, we'll, we'll claim that at least now that everyone, you don't have the photo, but the arm touch is a positive. So yes. now the last stitch up we had, mate, and this is an absolute ripper. I love the confidence and... Your form's been great this year and clearly you've been doing extras. And one of the extras that you boys have been doing now, you try and find an edge somewhere. So I think a few years ago, there was boys doing floats in the, in the pods. But for some reason this, this year, it's the electric soda crystal baths. Now, as the story goes, apparently you, guys, <laughs> you boys don't have a bath at your house, <laughs> but you're looking to do extras, which we love. But who lives four doors down? <laughs> Head coach Chewy Do. <laughs> so you've given him a ring. <laughs> to ask if you could use his bath. <laughs> and apparently he told you he <laughs> after he's finished playing with the kids. So can you talk me through that? <laughs> I don't know. It was before <laughs> it was before a game. It's just it just um told me off about not doing my supplements on the phone. And before I've walked off, I go, Hi oh, Stewie, can I um have a bath at yours? And he looks at me like all oh, weirded out. <laughs> he's like, What? Can I have a bath at yours? Sure, he goes, yeah, mate, no problem. I'll give you a message at about 7.30 once I'm putting the kids down. Right. Um, and yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, didn't... I was going to say, at least that's one way to get in the coach's school books because he knows you're doing the extras. So there is always <laughs> a positive to these stitch-ups. Now, those are all the stitch-ups we've got for you. So mm -hmm. you can breathe easy now. Uh, we'll get into some more footy chat. And, mate, your story is actually pretty incredible. So... I firstly wanted to know about your under 18 year at Claremont because it's incredibly interesting for someone to be a top 20 pick and fly so far under the radar. So I wanted to know where you initially felt you were sitting at the start of the year in terms of your chance in getting drafted and how the year went and even missing selection for WA in the national carnival. Yeah, it is very interesting. Um, I guess it was at the start of the year, my 18s, I, one of my friends, I played for junior football as well uh, down at Scarborough. Uh, his dad was a manager, being Colin Young. Um, and he saw me play footy down at Scarborough with his son and asked if my boots were too big or too small one time after a game. And I was like, oh, yeah, they're a little bit too big. What's that? He's like, oh, I'll get you some boots. I was like, oh, sweet. Cool. Um, and then after that, got the boots and then got my number and he rang me. He said, oh, we'll go for a coffee, have a chat, and sort of just went from there. And I was like, oh, wow, this is the first bit of interest I've had from AFL perspective. Um, and that was when I was 18, going into 18's year with Claremont. Um, I guess I didn't really have my any expectations of getting drafted even when I was 18. Um, so I just played footy, played footy with my friends, just loved it. And then I reckon it was about round three after the... Um, Perth game at Lath Lane, I got a call from the Gold Coast recruiters 
uh, and that was a really interesting call because it was they told me to tell absolutely nobody, like not even friends, not even mum and dad or my sisters. Um, so it was real odd because that was the first ever interaction I had with an AFL club. And then as the weeks went on, a little bit more interest came and I ended up talking to about six six clubs um, by the time the state combine came along. Uh, and it's still no certainty at all. I think the most interest was from Gold Coast and Melbourne. Um, and then that's when I decided to make, oh, actually, I skipped the, the little highlights package um, I made at about halfway through the year, um, just gave my manager. I used to go home with a little USB and take each game um, from each week, plug it into the computer at home and jump on a little editing software and just edit out my best best clips from the game and made a little movie out of it. Um, and again, I didn't do that to send it to any recruiters or anything, but I then told my manager about it and he was like, oh, shit, all right. Uh, well, let me see it and sent it off to all 18 clubs and then that's when the interest started coming in and pretty hot as well. Yeah, so it was pretty interesting because um, I heard about the tapes and it clearly generated a lot <laughs> of interest from clubs. Like, uh, I read that not only did you speak to Port Frio, Carlton and Collingwood, but yeah, Melbourne... And Gold Coast specifically were saying, let's be hush hush, and they showed a lot of interest in you. So, what was the experience like with all of those clubs sort of coming to meet with you? And were there any kind of funny encounters that you kind of experienced? Um, yeah, it was it was bloody nerve wracking and scary when clubs rock up at your front door. Um, I could, there was nothing really, nothing that really stand out. I remember Collingwood um, told me that they don't think I was ready to play AFL when they came and chatted to me just from talking to me or something. But um, other than that, it was Gold Coast came over once and Melbourne came over once. And they just said, whenever, when any other club talks to you, just don't tell them we've ever sat in this chair. <laughs> so it was, it was sort of exciting in a way because it sort of meant something. No, nah, absolutely. And I was curious as to, um, you had a lot of that interest, but then how did you uh, miss selection for the Western Australian uh, state team and not play in the National Carnival? Yeah, that still confuses me. Um, I still don't really know. I got an um, invitation just so that they're looking at me to participate, but then never got an invitation to actually go and try out for the state team. Yeah, so how does that work for you guys? Because obviously we have the TAC system in Melbourne and there's obviously through that, you have a lot of top end players, but I think for you guys, I think the premier kind of league you play in is playing senior waffle. And then obviously the Colts are all reserves underneath that. So what's the kind of selection like and how does that process kind of work? Uh, I think they base it off previous state um, teams. So if you played 16s, you'd get an invitation to go play, Let's try out for 18s. And if you're, well, I honestly don't know how they pick it from the 18s, um, like Claremont Colts. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I, was, I wasn't playing red hot footy. I was just playing footy, getting 14 touches a game. And, but I just, yeah, I don't know. It still baffles me. <laughs> just, just playing your role. And so obviously talk us through draft night. Uh, you've had such a, a unique build up to the draft. Uh, where did you watch it and where were you expecting to go? Yeah, I was watching it at home um, with a few people because we expected at, on draft night to be picked up um, with word of manager and that sort of thing. Um, I didn't expect to go where I went. There was one bloke that was supposed to go there if that pick was there and I was meant to go a bit later to a different club. Um, but yeah, it was pretty surreal when my name got read out because no one in the room knew and I had about 10 friends and the rest family just surrounding and a few people were out the back having beers and then everyone in the room just goes crazy and they come running in. It's like, what's your happy? So yeah, it was pretty cool, pretty surreal. I can still remember it so, so clearly. Um, yeah. It must have been an amazing moment, of course. And then you make the big journey across uh, to the Gold Coast from WA. 
how did you find the move across with the new surroundings? Um, and then how did you find your first AFL preseason, assuming that your preseason at Claremont Colts wouldn't have really stacked up to anything quite as close as that? No, no way. Um, found the move pretty good uh, for the first three, four months and then playing games. Um, the preseason was, oh my goodness, I haven't ever done anything as hard in my life. <clears throat> and then on top of the... Um, on top of all the training as well and just dietary requirements and just gym, it's just so full on. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, and then during the year, I got a little bit homesick. I sort of missed mum and dad and my sisters. Um, and I voiced that to mum and dad. And then during my second year, mum and dad moved over um, to be with me. So I lived with them the whole of last year with another draftee, Jez McLennan from South Australia. Um, and that just set me up. I love it here now. Don't want to turn around and go back at all. Um, yeah, yeah, well, it's interesting because um, moving forward to this year, you've obviously had your breakout year with the individual performance uh, cementing yourself on the side and the, the side that's really building momentum. Is there anything that you've specifically done or was it your family coming across that's really helped you take your game to another level? Because it's really noticeable from the outside looking in. Yeah, I think it's definitely family coming over. Um, I just feel so comfortable here. Um, I feel respected, like, around from the peers. I put in that hard work, and I think I didn't understand that sort of hard work, and the respect levels weren't there in my first and second year. Um, so I really dug down on that, or nailed down on that, and worked really hard to earn the respect back from peers, and I was a bit immature. And I think now that I've matured a bit more, um, it's... It's made me more confident as a player and as a person. And I just I just feel comfortable playing footy. Absolutely, mate. And the last question I got for you before I chuck it over to Moose, on the topic of improving yourself, I actually read somewhere, and I really rate that you look to gain feedback wherever you can to improve yourself. Um, but you actually ask your direct opponents after the game or you kind of speak to them um, and try to get a bit of feedback on what they think. And that's a very interesting thing. And I think it's a very good approach to... Uh, to Benefit yourself. So where did that kind of happen and come from? I don't know. It was first, um, the first time I ever did it was against Charlie Cameron. Um, I just asked him, it was after this one specific contest um, and he just used his body so well. And I just was like, after the game, I was like, mate, how do you do that? And how do I like, counter that? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I just pride myself. I'm not going to the ground. And then he just talked about, um, I'll be a better player and all you really need is a strong core and just, keep nailing down on everything you don't think you're good at yet. Um, and that was the first time I've done it and I'll probably keep doing it. Yeah, it's interesting to hear that, man. And I think I wanted to I'll actually elaborate on another point that you guys made before um, about the respect at the club. What, is it, what, what does it kind of look like to, to, to gain respect at a footy club? Because obviously you walk in the door, you're completely fresh-faced, you're a young kid. Um, and it must be intimidating. You know, you're walking in the door and you've got guys like Tuke Miller, uh, Andrew Swallow, Witty. Um, and you must want that respect so badly. How do you go about sort of gaining that? Because I wouldn't know the first thing to do. <laughs> yeah, also I didn't know the first thing to do either. Um, it's just a, I think it's just training standards and just showing everyone that you're supposed to be there and you want to be there. Um, and then just not being too overly confident. I think just copying, copying what comes in your first year and then working on whatever you need to work on from what you've got wrong in your first year to your second year. Um, Have you had any like moments of brutal honesty from leadership group or other players or coaches or anything that you can particularly remember that might have uh, stuck with you? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. A couple of couple of players in my sec going from my first to second year, they told me to pull my head in in a way and stop being so immature, and that really opened my eyes as well. Because I was very, very, looking back on, I was very immature compared to now. I mean, I'm still immature, um, but in my first and halfway through the second year, I was just stupidly immature, and right that opened my eyes and <clears throat> had to work on it because it's yeah. It's interesting to hear, and then when you see young blokes coming through, like the the blokes who are going to get drafted this year and maybe last year as well. Do you sort of try and put an arm around them or give them a nudge in the right direction? Is that a responsibility that you feel like you're ready to take yet? Uh, I've sort of felt in a way this year I've done that um, to a certain draftee. Uh, and I think I've worked, worked on that pretty well this year and I've 
sort of steered him on the right path, um, which has helped me as well grow as a person. And they're my best mates. <laughs> yeah, that's it's, awesome. It's, it's awesome, yeah. That's so cool, man. And you can kind of actually notice that from looking at the Suns. I think anybody who watches the Suns at the moment would notice that, that the level of professionalism looks like it's gone through the roof. And I remember when I was there a few years back visiting Tukey and Richie Ponch will tell you this as well, that um, about the, the tin sheds and all of that that you guys yeah. used to have in the training facilities. How is it sort of, I mean, obviously the training facilities and the personnel has gone to the next level. Do you, do, have you felt that in your few years at the club? In, well, I wasn't here for the tin sheds and that, but from what I've heard, it was, yeah, it just wasn't normal, especially for an AFL club. Um, yeah. And we have Com Games to thank for our new facility now. <clears throat> oh, right. Um, that we're in now. Um, but the personnel change. Yeah, it's, I think we've just got, I think Stewie coming in, he's just gotten everyone that he wants in and that feels comfortable and we're trying to really build that sort of family aspect around the club being one of our key figures at the club, family. Um, and I think he's done a perfect job at that. Uh, everyone at the club's just so family orientated and makes you feel war- welcome. Well, you can tell by the bath story that it is, uh, <laughs> you would, you do feel maybe a bit too welcome <laughs> <laughs> at Stewie's house there. Yeah. Um, what's your personal relationship like with Stewie? Obviously pretty close. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good. Um, we just have the, Odd chat here and there. It's nothing too um, special, I guess, in a mm. way. But it's just, it's a good friendship. Yeah, well, as long as you're happy with it, it's all that counts, man. Now, you've, we've tried to reach out to some of your teammates and get them to stitch you up. Now, I'm going to give you a long list of chances to stitch your teammates back up here, okay? <laughs> I've got just a bunch of questions for you. And I want to know who's likely, most likely to, uh, to be the, the answer to the question. <laughs> So the first one I've got for you, who's most likely to go back to thirds at the canteen? Jeremy Sharp. Not Dewey? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what about the fullback? Collins. He looks Collins. Like a, he looked like an absolute unit. He's a unit with about 3% body fat. Oh, really? What about, yeah, what about Day? <laughs> Sammy Day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he could be up there. Looks like you'd eat six, <laughs> six meals for breakfast. Now, most likely to be best on for Mad Monday? Tuke Miller. Tukey boy. Tukey. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest larrikin, who never shuts up? <laughs> if I couldn't say it myself, I'd say Jeremy Sharp again. <laughs> <laughs> Under the bus, Jeremy goes. Yep. Now, who thinks that they do the best with the ladies? Charlie Ballard. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Who claims to have the best rig? Jez McLennan. Is he one of the, one of the new boys? Uh, last year. Audacious uh, for the new boy to be coming in and just be yeah. going down the gauntlet no, saying he's got the best rig. He loves having his shirt off, that's for sure. <laughs> and who does their hair before training when they know the cameras are going to be out? Ooh. <clears throat> I'd say Luke Toey, Irish boy. Oh, yeah. Live with yeah. him. He probably just heard me in the next, in the room next <laughs> door. <laughs> when you guys did the Gold Coast Suns takeover, when Tuke did that for us, I think Toey had a, uh, a mask on. Or something yeah, like the, that? The goggles? He's still wearing them? No, nah, he's, he's got rid of them. He copped an elbow to the eye. Got the surgery on it. Right. Probably, probably copped more for wearing the goggles than the elbow to the eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now, which, who are the blokes at the club who are inseparable? Who are two blokes who never leave each other's pockets? Matt and Noah. Really? Uh, so the hype is real. They the are hype actually is, the best hype is real. They're, they're best, best mates. Has Rowley got his pad out at training at the moment? <laughs> no. Yeah, he hasn't have, had to give anyone a rinse to no, training. No, no more rinses. <laughs> <laughs> Is he not doing... I'd say Stewie Juice is taking a break from doing the sprays and rallies, <laughs> bringing blokes in, performance Stewie review Juice meetings. Take, Stewie Juice taking a break being head coach and rallies. <laughs> Rally hasn't delisted anyone this year. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, <don't> know. <laughs> now, who's mo- most likely to sleep with the lights on? Sleep with the lights on. <laughs> Who's the biggest coward, in other words? <laughs> <laughs> Who needs a, lull- a lullaby before bed? <laughs> Brandon, Brandon Ellis, definitely. Brandon Ellis, the yeah, new boy. Sleeps with the lights on, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Now, who does the most freakishly skillful things at training that you look back and you're like, what the hell was that? Look, Isaac Rankin, easily. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. It's actually stupid what he does at training. <laughs> you just look at that and marvel? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a different cat, Isaac yeah, Rankin. Yeah, he is. He's a freak. He must be a good bloke to be taking it. You must play on him because if you play back pocket yeah. or half back, you must play on him at training. I've, yeah, we're actually a good little matchup because you take the. We've got a little rivalry going. He's got me a few times. I've got him a few times, and it's. I think it's lock and horns at the moment. It's yeah, good. beautiful. Are you are you pretty good mates with ranks? Yeah, yeah, we're pretty close. He plays the guitar and all the raps and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I saw it on his Instagram. He does everything. What he's does a different. Do? He's a different cat, Isaac. Let's <laughs> yeah. get him on the podcast. You have to. Yeah, give it, give him, word him up for us, mate. <laughs> now, who is the biggest weirdo at the club? <laughs> biggest weirdo. Who does the weirdest things? Oh, I'm gonna have to say Brandon Ellis again. He does some real odd stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mates with a few of his mates back in Melbourne, and uh, I've heard that he's an interesting cat. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> now, last one I've got for you. Oh well, this is kind of two, but who is least who is most likely to pick up the bill and least likely to pick up the bill? Least likely to pick up the bill, Jack Bowes. He's short arms, long pockets, really <laughs> long pockets. Deep as they come. The old velociraptor. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, uh, first one up to pick up the bill. Um, shit. Probably Witsy. Witsy, the captain. Witsy, the captain. We love that. Looking after the younger boys. Now, yep. Pally, got to say a massive thank you, mate. I know it's your off season and uh, you're probably enjoying yourself. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast, brother. We really appreciate your time today. Yeah, thank you for having me. No worries, Love it.